Welcome to the channel. I'm Modi J, and this is For Life Season 2, the recap. Now, Season 1 was very, very interesting. It started off kind of slow, but then it picked up, and they did their thing throughout the season. But now we're back for Season 2, and this is the fastest thing getting back on TV during the quarantine. But before we go any further, shout out to Notification Game. Without y'all, none of this is possible. If you want to be part of that, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. And if you know me, man, I'm not going to hold you up much. This is For Life. Season 2, Episode 1. Let's get it. As we know, at the end of last season, we know that Aaron is granted a new trial, retrial. So all the information is falling in place. So he gets to prove himself. But also there was the fight that was going on and everybody's getting jammed up and stuff. So now we see the prison. What they're doing is they're starting to put they're starting to put microphones throughout the prison so they can hear everything that's going on. That, that Aaron will be talking about because they're not trying to let Aaron out of jail. If Aaron gets out of jail and becomes a lawyer, then he's going to start taking all the inmates that are being treated wrong in there because he knows what's been going on in there. And he's going to turn that against the prison and then start getting everybody out and just start exposing everybody. So that's something that they do not want to have happen. So they're putting microphones everywhere to listen to everything so they can be able to counter whatever Aaron brings up or talks about. Just so they can be, you know, a heads up, a step ahead of what's going on. Aaron is finally meeting up with Harry and talking about his options of what he has. Maria is also here. So what he's telling them is, I have a plea deal on the table. I could take this plea and I can go home. You know, so I can get out and I can come home. The only problem with him taking a plea is, is saying he admits to being a drug trafficker, kingpin. And with that on his record, it's not going to look good for him. He's not going to be able to practice law. He's not going to be able to be a lawyer. And that's what he really wants to do because he wants to help people, especially being in this whole situation and everything being bad on him. He wants to be able to help others get out of these situations because he knows they're not getting treated right. And Marie's like, you just need to come home. I'll, I'll quit my job and everything. But Aaron is like, no, nah, I don't want you to quit your job because as a man, I should still be able to take care of everything. But Marie's like, you need to come home because your daughter, she had a grandson. He has your name and everything. We need you home. But Aaron really wants to practice law. Now, I, I agree with him and he's going to think about it. But me personally, I don't know if I would take the plea if I know I was innocent. I'm just going to take my time and try to fight this. But I'm not I'm not saying I'm guilty of anything I know I didn't do. One of the bad things for Aaron is he's trying to get a retrial. The prison's all against him. So right now he's being labeled a rat by everybody within the prison. We know how that goes. If you're labeled the rat, it's pretty much <laughs> over with for you in prison. So Aaron, he's afraid of eating his food in the cafeteria. He wants to be able to eat his food in his room so no one can attack him and he's actually safe. And Harry was telling them that they're not going to let you eat the cafeteria because if you just got a retrial and then you end up dead, it's going to look bad on the prison. So this guard is telling Aaron, I'm going to make sure you get your food. But what I'm telling you is you need to get out of here, Aaron. I'm quitting. I'm getting up out of here while they're getting this good because everything is going to turn back and look at everybody like, OK, we're trying to get Aaron. Who was Aaron in contact with? And this guy, he's like, I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm not I'm not sticking around. Aaron, you should get out of here. And I'm going to help you, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to help you try to get your food and stuff so you'll be safe. Don't, you don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to look out for you on that aspect. With Aaron still representing people, he's allowed to go see Jamal. Even though Jamal's in the ICU in, in the infirmary, he's still able to see him and talk to him because he's representing them. Now, while he's in there, Jamal's telling him, like, hey, man, you know, things didn't go as planned and, you know, it is what it is, but you need to get out of here. You need to stop worrying about me. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to be all right here. This is the life I live. I've been knowing this for years. But what you need to do is get out, get home, and see your son. And Aaron, he's not that type of person to leave somebody if he started helping them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I started this. I'm going to help you. Hey, whatever we had that happened, it, it, it's done. It's done. Me and you were good before that. It's over. It was a little spill. Here we are now. Let's make it happen. Let's get you better. Let's get you right. And let me get up out of here and go see my grandson. So Jamal's like, take care of your family, man. I'll be all right. And Aaron is telling them, no, I'm going to help you and I'm going to help my family. Aaron ain't give up on nobody. That's the good thing about him. Now it's time for Aaron to go ahead and come in here and sign the plea deal. And Aaron, he's, he's iffy on it because, like I said, if he signs this, he's admitting to guilt, which means he won't be able to practice law anymore. Now, before Aaron came in, Harry was talking to the guy. He was telling him, 
hey, look, man, this isn't what you signed up for, man. Doing all this stuff illegally, like we're gathering information on what's going on inside these walls. This isn't what you signed up. You signed up to be overseeing the law and making sure that the law is even and fair, straight down the middle, like for everybody. So he's just saying, why are you cooperating with the prison? You know, saying to try to lock Aaron up when you know Aaron isn't. He isn't guilty of this stuff. He's actually been in jail suffering. So Aaron, he's sitting there looking at it and he's debating, like, should I take this? And just like I said earlier, I don't think a man of Aaron's statute would, would, would take a plea deal admitting guilt. I don't think anybody would, unless you're just really trying to get out. If he can get time served, okay, cool. He did nine years, but he won't be able to practice law and you'll be a convicted felon. It's all bad for Aaron at this point. Our new DA, he goes in there after talking to Wallace and them. He's starting to see things a little different. Like, what is Glenn actually doing in here? So he goes in there and he calls Glenn out and he's like, what are you doing? Wallace has figured out you're putting microphones and cameras everywhere. He knows all this stuff. Everything is going to start backfiring on us. What are you doing? And he's pretty much like, man, don't worry about all that. You're the new DA. You need to handle this. You're going to take this to the retrial. You got to win this. And... The DA's pretty much like, hey, man, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do. And he's already leaning towards maybe Aaron is innocent. And Glenn's telling him, forget all that. Get it done. He's telling them that Hunt's not going to let, you know, saying Aaron get into anything. So as long as he's in his cell, we should be ahead of this. And it's just not looking good for him. So Glenn ends up asking him. So what do you do? You think that Aaron is innocent? And he's at, he didn't say anything. But at this point. Is looking like Aaron might be innocent and Glenn you're just sending me in here for nothing and I'm gonna look bad because if this goes to trial I already know how it looks it looks like we're setting Aaron up and we're gonna have all this evidence against us we might not be able to get out of this I apologize earlier I was calling Henry Harry but it is what it is anyway Henry calls Mazarin he's talking to her and he's pretty much giving her compliments like hey you're the most qualified ex or you know saying but anyway I'm calling you because the transfer papers that you got for Aaron it might get you know saying denied they might just sweep it up on the rug but we need to be able to get Aaron up out of there because what they're doing they're setting up microphones they got cameras they got bugs all around so Aaron's case is pretty much everybody's case the whole everybody's going to know <clears throat> exactly what Aaron is bringing to the trial so we got to figure out a way to be able to get Aaron transferred up out of this prison in order to have a fair trial for Aaron to get up out show that he's innocent and be able to go home so that's the thing that we're working on now can we get Aaron transferred up out of this prison so he can get a fair trial now what we come across is another guard that was there while Hunt was setting up all the cameras, the microphones, and everything. <clears throat> and she's telling Mazury, like, this is what we've seen and this is what was going on. We didn't even get asked how we felt about it. It was just, hey, this is what we're doing. Go get it done and don't say nothing to nobody. But she's telling Mazury, so Mazury's actually seeing, okay, Henry wasn't lying about what Aaron is saying is going on. This stuff is true and we need to be able to get this information out so Aaron can, of course, like the whole show is get a fair trial to get up out of prison. Oh man, it is. It's a crazy season two already. Aaron's back in his cell now and Huey comes up to him. He's talking to him like, hey man, you know, you going home? And Aaron's like, nah, I didn't take the plea deal. So Huey's like, you didn't take it? What, what are you doing, man? That was your get out of jail free ticket. And Aaron's not going to take that because he didn't do it. Just like we've been saying over and over and over. But we got to put this in everybody's head because the DA and them, they believe he did it. But we know Aaron didn't do it. But Huey, looking out for Aaron, what he does is he gives him a USB drive. And what this USB drive contains is all of the documents. I won't even say documents. All of the recordings, any of the camera footage. And he gives it to Aaron. So the good thing for Aaron is I actually have this. And with this information... If he presents it in court, it's, the judge is going to look at it like if they're doing crooked stuff like this, it's going to be a lot of other things that we might need to double back and look on that might be crooked. So for Aaron, he has a piece like this USB right here is going to be monumental for his case and how he moves forward and how he's going to actually direct and like, OK, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to present this. I'm going to show people this. So now Aaron can build his case up more to defend himself and actually get himself off because these people are very crooked. We already know the prison system is very crooked, but what they're doing to Aaron, that is, 
It's just unexplainable, man. This is where things start to get ugly for Marie. She gets called in by the district attorney O'Reilly, and he starts going over a, a list of things that's happened that occurred in season one. He uh, talks to her about the first time when she went to the medical records where she looked up the girl that overdosed at Aaron's club. She wasn't authorized to do that. And then it was another list of a few things that, that she did to help Aaron. She starts to plead the fifth for everything. So O'Reilly's like, okay, okay, good. I, I get you pleading the fifth. So Henry is like, yeah, from here on out, we're just going to plead the fifth. In comes O'Reilly's boss, and he gives him a folder. In this folder is documentation that says the letter that she received last year from Aaron was a forged letter that was used in the trial. Now, this right here is the... This is the dagger. This could put Marie in jail. First, you forged the document and it became legal evidence. This right here can get you serious jail time. On top of everything else she did, it could be real ugly for her, man. It could be super ugly for Marie. Now we got to try to figure out, let's get Aaron out of jail and let's try to protect Marie. Or it could be Aaron gets out of jail and then he has to get Marie out of jail. I don't know how it's going to work, but it's ugly for Marie right now. While Aaron is on the bus, he's talking to one of the guards because he, this guard knows about all the crook stuff that's been going on. And Aaron's saying, listen, I've asked you guys to treat us better than just inmates. We're still humans. We're not just a number. You guys need to treat us better and fairly. Like, you guys, you, you're not treating us right. The only reason you're treating us right now is because I put pressure on the district attorney to come actually look at what's going on in the prison. So now you guys are treating us like humans. But I need you to come forward and be honest and help me out. You know, Aaron's trying to tell him, like, listen, everything that you did that was wrong up until now, you can, you can, you know, make that right by coming forward and helping me, you know, say on my case and tell what's going on in here. You won't lose your job because you're doing your job. If you're treating us right, that means you're doing your job. So Aaron is just trying to find little pieces that he can bring together to help solidify his case and actually build a strong case. Now, this was interesting to me. Before this little trial, little hearing went on, Aaron recorded a video to send to Mikey. And what he said was, Mikey, I know you're scared, and I, I don't blame you. Like, I've been in jail, and I know how it is, so I don't blame anybody that's out of jail that would do whatever they can to stay out of jail. You don't want to be in here, even if that means throwing your friend under the bus. So what Aaron is saying is, like, I forgive you for that because I know you don't want to be in here. I don't want to be in here either. But if you're man enough, I need you to come forward and say something. You know, whatever you can do to help me, even if it's a little bit, I need all the help I can get. I understand you don't want to be in prison. I understand why you threw me under the bus. But forget all that. Is there any way you can help me? Anyway. Now, Jamal got himself out the infirmary and he went and met with Cash's people on the yard. And he was pretty much telling them, like, hey, man, we got to get this stuff right. You know what I'm saying? We got to get this prison together. If we can take out the Aryans, we can get the black people to back to running this prison and we'll be good to go. Now, Huey comes and gets Aaron up out of his cell. And it's dark. It's late because Aaron can't be out during the daytime because people are after him. So he takes him into the cafeteria. And when Huey takes him in there, it's empty. But Jamal doesn't come out. It's Cash's people. But what Cash's people do is they start whooping on Aaron. They beating them bad. I'm talking about boom, 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 stomping them out. While they're doing this, you look up and there's a camera recording. So what I think that they're going to do is use this footage and say, see how unsafe the prison is? People are getting jumped in there. Aaron is unprotected in there. So while this happens, they stop and they end up leaving. Jamal comes in and picks Aaron up and he tells him, like, hey, look, your dad is gone now. So whether you win or lose, your dad is good. This is what we did. I delivered you to them. So pretty much Jamal is saying, I always got your back no matter what's going on. And you can probably use this footage. So Jamal is actually loyal. He got Aaron out of whatever debt he had to cash his people. They jumped him. And this is going to this is going to help him get out of jail. And he might be able to represent them and get them out of jail, too. So, hey, it's a win win. We already know Aaron isn't a dummy. Now, he told Jamal he had a different plan of how he was going to get himself out of jail. But Jamal was like, you know what? Forget it. Let's fast track and get you jumped. So the next day, Aaron's meeting with this guy and he's telling him like, hey, 
you know what? You guys are real crooked in here. And he starts telling Aaron, that's a, that's a good job what you did with Huey. How, what you do? You, you tell him you're going to give him some of your drug money when you get out? Aaron was like, nah, that, there's no drug money or any of that. But I want to talk to you about the footage that happened in the gym. And the guy's like, oh, there wasn't nothing in there. And Aaron says, I know there wasn't nothing in there because you deleted the evidence. But it didn't matter because I already made a subpoena to get the tapes. But I have the original tape on my own. So whatever you showed them that's edited, I have the real version. And you know deleting video is, that's a federal offense, brother. So Aaron, he he always has a plan. And Aaron has all of the footage. So what he tells him is like, I seen what happened in the gym. You deleted that. I also have footage of you ordering a hit on me. So what can you do? Right now, I'm doing. I'm in the driver's seat, and Aaron is trying to get up out of here. He's on the highway to hell, and hey, he's trying to make an exit on freedom. <laughs> now we get to see footage of Aaron's boy that he hired that was working at the uh, club, and he's pretty much saying, like, hey, when I got arrested, I told the police Aaron had nothing to do with this. The drugs wasn't his. Aaron had nothing to do with it. The only thing Aaron has to do with this is he owns this club. But Aaron doesn't do anything illegal. He doesn't touch anything illegal. That's not what Aaron does. So this footage right here is going to be very vital and key because he'll be able to testify and tell the judge, like, hey, this was in my statement when I got arrested. And no one, they, dis they just disregarded it. It looks like they were just trying to set Aaron up. And that, that we see this all the time. It doesn't matter, like, if a rapper gets in trouble, it doesn't matter who's with the rapper, they're not going to put it on him. They're going to say, oh, those drugs and guns, that was the rapper stuff. So this is the same thing that happened to Aaron, and, man, this is episode one, I tell you, look, they're doing a lot of stuff to try to knock Aaron down, but Aaron's just going to keep fighting. Never give up in life, man. Y'all got to be like Aaron. Now, 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 the power is coming down on top of Glenn's head. So... They asked Glenn, what do you know about Michael Miller, you know, Aaron's childhood friend? And he's like, oh, he was a drug dealer. No, 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 no. Not about that. He told us that you coerced him to flip on Aaron. And Glenn is like, no, I, I, um, we, we, we didn't do that. You know, he, he did that on his own. And, there, and Glenn's boss is like, no, nah, I know for a fact that it took less to coerce uh, Aaron than it did for Mike. So you guys are corrupt. And I also talked to Mr. Hunt. I seen the deleted footage that you did. You tried to use Aaron's wife against him. And when I ordered the lockdown, you told Hunt to cancel it. It's not looking good for you, Glenn. Everything I've told you to do, you went against it to try to set Aaron up. Now all this information is coming back. Glenn, it's not looking good for you. We're gonna be on your ass. We gotta get this right. We got to figure out how to make this right with Aaron, because if Aaron sues us, sues the prison, we're going to lose a lot of money, a lot of money. Pretty much Glenn is effed right now. Now, Glenn is going to have to try to figure out how he's going to come back from the deleted footage and everything that he did with Hunt. Because Hunt pretty much confessed and said, yeah, I was with Glenn. We deleted all this information. So Glenn is really in the hot seat right now. <laughs> Aaron is exonerated. He gets to practice law. His assault charges are gone. He may get a one or two misdemeanors, but Aaron is a free man. He's getting up out of here. All of the wrongs have been righted. Aaron is a free man now. Just got to sign these documents and he can get on out of prison. Whew. It was a long episode, a long build up to get to this moment, but Aaron is a free man. I salute you, Aaron. Way to stick to it. Aaron goes back and he's starting to gather all his cases of all the inmates that he's worked for. Jamal comes in there, he's talking to him, and Jamal's he's happy. Like, man, I'm glad you're going home, man. It's gonna be a lot of people that miss the lawyer, you know what I'm saying? And Aaron is pretty much like, hey man, look, I'm still gonna be here. And I actually looked at your case, and there's a few things that I think I can touch on. I can get you out of here too. So just bear with me. Give me some time. You see how long it took me to get myself out of here. Give me some time, Jamal. I'm going to get you out of here because everything you did for me since the time I've been in prison, yeah, man, I'm going to look out for you, too. Don't even worry about that because we, at this point, they family. They had their little, they had their little, you know what I'm saying, the little disagreement. But at the end of the day, Jamal looked out for him on the street side. Aaron looked out for Jamal on the legal side. It, 
That's what friendship's about. Sometimes you're going to clash your heads, but at the end of the day, y'all going to make it right. Y'all going to make it right. Aaron is a free man, but before he leaves, there's a sign that says prison rep. And up under it, he leaves a note that says never stop fighting. This is for whoever the next prison rep that's going to be. And for all the inmates that come in there and see it like, hey, never stop fighting on your case. As he's leaving, all the inmates, they see him leaving, walking out, and they celebrating because he looked out for a lot of them. Now, I know they thought he was a rat or a snitch, but at the end of the day, he was helping people. And he was the, he's the prison rep, so he wasn't snitching. He was just giving the information to get people out of jail. He gets out. The old warden, she's there. Marsha, she's there. The old prison warden, Masri, she's there. She said, I want to see you out. Like, from the time you came in, I want to see you walk through the gates. And then he comes out, and Marie's out there. Hey, the family's together. He's a free man. He's out <sighs> about damn time. Good job, Aaron. Good job. Welcome home, my brother. Welcome home. There you go. Season two, episode one, recap for life. Comment below what you think, man. Was it long enough for Aaron to get out? Like, it took long enough, right? But anyway, that was a good episode. I'm ready for next week to see how it's going to be with him actually being out and him practicing law. So, <sighs> Be here next week for episode two. I'm Mode IJ. Thanks for watching. And like always, man, if you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bell. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.